Hi, welcome back to section six of this course on serverless architectures and best practices. In the last few sections, we explored how you can build a serverless service and which basic architectural patterns you can adopt in order to coordinate and manage different services. In this video, we will move forward discussing about what can be wrong when you have a number of services joined together and what can be wrong also within the single service. So we'll discuss in the first video about how to handle service failures and which different kind of failures you have to face within your everyday job. Then we will discuss a particular type of failure, which is a dependency failure, and we will introduce step function as a meaning to avoid or to mitigate this kind of failures related to dependencies. And finally, we're going to discuss and introduce the chain of responsibility pattern in order to show how you can leverage on existing and well-known patterns and bring them into your serverless development. Let's start talking about handling services failures. In this video, you are going to understand the ways a service can fail. And please trust me, there are many, many ways things can go wrong. And then we will discuss and divide between handled and unhandled failures. So failures that you can catch and you can mitigate and failures you cannot catch. And we will discuss how to implement a dead letter queue to recover messages because events received by your Lambda are your messages and they are relevant because they contain pieces of the state of the service. So you do not have to lose any of them. Then we will discuss about CloudWatch to detect critical failures and how you can leverage a solution that is already available out of the box. But let's start about uh, talking about failures. A service can fail processing a request. That's a point that you cannot discuss. So please be prepared. Services can fail and services are going to fail processing your request. Plan for failure, project for failure, everything within your system. But failures can be related to a number of things such as bad request event, so you received a poisoned payload, you received an event which is not manageable by your Lambda function, or it contains some kind of incomplete code or whatever, or service can fail because your Lambda exceeds the execution time you allowed that to. This is important because it's something that you can some way mitigate increasing the timeout of the Lambda up to six minutes. And if a Lambda function is going to take more than six minutes, you probably have to ask yourself some other questions about the size of your service. But you have before mitigating Lambda timeout, you have to know, you have to understand that your services are running into timeout. And third party services, cannot respond, so another kind of failure can be related to dependency. Your service depends from another service that stops responding or sends back some kind of incomplete or failed data. And finally, service can fail because you missed to fix some bugs and so your service is buggy. Let's talk about failures that happens at execution when you are processing data and so you received a perfectly managed, a perfectly well-formed payload from your gateway, but while you are processing that data, you are performing the operation, something goes wrong. So this kind of failures that uh, often uh, can be called also exceptions, they should become an error to the caller. So exceptions must be handled. And the Lambda handler must not fail because a failure in a Lambda handler uh, sends back to the user a kind of 500 error, but with no additional information about how to fix this error, how to correct things that went wrong. 
So lambda handler must not fail. You should return an object with error status code set to 400 something or 500 whatever. By this way, the caller will receive a well-formed response because your lambda is going to call context.succeed. But if the status code error is set to 400 or 500, the API gateway is going to send back an error. So that's kind of HTTP status code. And you can specify also the nature of the error using the correct 400 or 500 code and you can also send back an additional payload to explain more to the caller how to fix the error. So this is the reason why the Lambda Handler cannot fail. It should never fail if you are handling an exception, if you are handling something that went wrong while processing data sent to the user. Because if it fails, the user is going to receive just a 500 error with no additional information. About failures, if you are using promises, and this is quite a common pattern in Node.js, there is an additional path for failures, because a thing can fail synchronously or asynchronously. A synchronous fail is related to a promise failing to return the correct data, uh, and can be cached by the final catch clause of the promise, or by the then path with uh, handling the error. But synchronous failure, which means that something went wrong even before you started firing the promise chain, cannot be tracked uh, in this way. This is due to the fact that promises uh, works only on asynchronous, so you have to rely on something allowing you to join together these two different paths. There are three main methods to recover for an exception in Node while using promises, of course. The first one is handling synchronous and asynchronous errors separately, but this is not optimal in my opinion, and you should avoid that. Or you can use an external framework such as Bluebird. Bluebird provides a promise try function, and if you wrap all your code, both synchronous and asynchronous, within the promise try, everything will be handled allowing the failure to bubble so you can have a final catch close on your promise chain and handle either synchronous or asynchronous failures but i would suggest you to consider adopting async away construct which are available from node 8 that has been announced supported by lambda couple of weeks ago and with uh, a sync await you can manage everything in a synchronous way so it's a syntactic sugar upon your promises and it can deeply reduce the amount of code you have to write but it can also make your promises act as any other synchronous statement so you can manage everything with try catch Definitely my suggestion is to go through a sync await and figure out if they can help you. And in my opinion, they will help you to reduce the code and to better uh, error code handling. Moving back, jumping back to failures, you can experience failures when processing events. So the failures are not related to your code, but to something that arrives to your code. And when the failure is due to API gateway, there is not much you can do because is the gateway that is going to generate is going to build the error and send the error back and so you will collect a 502 for template mismatch if something goes wrong while mapping from http payload to lambda event or 500 for other kind of errors such as if the gateway becomes unresponsive or whatever Unfortunately, gateway errors are not recoverable within a function, so you cannot handle them gracefully, and they can occur not only from your client and your server, but if you are adopting a microservice architecture, they can occur also between a service and another. So uh, you need a meaning to uh, recover from this error to not lose the event, because losing the event means losing important information and potentially also losing state for your system. Fortunately, Lambda provides 
a dead letter Q, uh, which is an SQS queue provided out of the box uh, or connected to your Lambda function directly for you. And it can be attached to the Lambda execution. It collects uh, unprocessed event and it can be queried by a client to AWS SDK. And also it can be attached to SNS to trigger notifiers and also Lambda recovery. The quite common example, uh, considering a service that brings the data from images uploaded to a bucket, and is that if anything goes wrong, it is pushed to the letter queue and another Lambda can recover from failure. So I deeply suggest you to activate and to use the letter queue because it's really simple to use. It's really powerful and can help you a lot to recover for a single service failure. Another mechanism to detect and recover for failures when these failures are more endemic and are frequent is to detect them through Amazon CloudWatch. Amazon CloudWatch is a monitoring service that supports fine-grained data gathering and it is integrated out of the box with Lambda. So you have support also for custom metrics and you can customize dashboard. But now we are gonna uh, see how it works. And let me open our AWS console. So here you'll see that we have the standard Lambda AWS console and we can go to Lambda functions and uh, I'm gonna bring, uh, say, this one, which is a particular Lambda function that queries an external service for Eros data. And uh, let me shrink desktop because I can open up Postman in order to uh, show you how this API works. Then uh, here we have our APIs, we send a request, and uh, now we are experiencing some cold start, so which is the first time uh, cold time, which is two, more than two seconds, and then it goes down. We always spend at least one second because this function is querying an external service, and we have a lot of latency managing the, the data coming from the service. As you can see, it's just a, um, some kind of demo service uh, that I have built for this. Uh, for this course because we are querying a superheroes API. But let us la a look to what happens uh, when we go to Lambda and choose monitoring. Here we have, uh, let me shrink down, okay, turn size. Here we have invocation counters and invocation duration and I can send another couple of requests in order to uh, speed up the invocation, the invocation count. Then we can see that uh, we can choose between last three hours and we can see that right now we have four invocations and we can also check the minimum, maximum and average execution time within the last three hours. The interesting thing is that we can jump to metrics and to logs directly from here. Let me show you how it works. If we choose to jump to metrics, we can uh, collect all metrics from API Gateway, DynamoDB or others, and we can also attach new metrics by API name. So we can choose and add, add this uh, metric to graph or uh, whatever, integration latency, counter, and so on. And we can build our own dashboard, or we can also add all of them to the graphic. And then uh, here we have metrics that uh, have been already set up for us, but on the other side, we can jump to logs, and the logs contains everything that is uh, outputted to console log or to context error or context succeed and everything is logged here and you can have the complete stream of logs so they are also divided by log groups 
and you can persist them if you wish, attaching something such as firewalls or whatever to your Lambda. Here uh, you have uh, invocation error and you have also DLQ errors. Uh, this is very important uh, uh, DLQ error because you can choose to attach a Lambda function directly to a CloudWatch metric and this CloudWatch metric could be DLQ error. And so if an error happens, your Lambda function can be triggered and uh, can be restored. So it's really a powerful mechanism and within CloudWatch, you can also build your own uh, dashboard. And within the dashboard, you can create any kind of dashboard, joining together the kind of uh, graphics that you need and bring data from metrics, which are the ones that we, that we choose to have. So right back the place where we can uh, choose the metrics we want to to graphics and to add to our to our dashboard and then we create the widget and we you can create customized dashboard so uh, that's all for cloudwatch and it's really powerful i suggest you to consider that by this way you can handle service within a service using try catch or promise try and outside the service you can rely on the letter q you can attach lambda function directly to a cloudwatch metric monitoring the letter q errors and this is really a powerful mechanism to detect error but once you have detected errors you need a way to manage them to recover from errors and this, this is a completely another story completely new story so managing dependencies is really difficult stuff and uh, we need a mechanism to handle dependencies to orchestrate functions